Hello and welcome to Backstage Buzz at the Mac, where you get the inside story and the art scene right from the creators of the shows. I'm Diana Martinez, and I can't wait for you to meet another round of amazing guests. Later in the show, we'll hear from artistic director and choreographer for Salt Creek Ballet, Sergei Kozadeyev. He'll share what we have to look forward to with the new production of The Nutcracker, coming soon to the Mac. But first, I'm so pleased to welcome Megan Babb to the show, who is a member of the Second City and will be part of the up upcoming performance of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly Sweater. So welcome, Megan. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So what I'm really excited for people to learn is how these shows get created, because I think they see you on stage and it's all so funny, but I don't think they understand you actually write the show. Yeah, yeah. So we go into process, and Second City has a unique uh, process where we use improvisation. So we, like I said, started in August. Um, we start improvising and writing and, and testing out material in front of audiences to see what works and what doesn't, what we have to change um, uh, to put up a lot of our original stuff. So. Where, where do you test this in front of audiences? Can you explain that to them? Yeah, so uh, sometimes when we're at home at the Second City in Chicago, we'll do a third act of our show. Right. Uh, generally, we do improv, but if we're testing stuff, uh, we'll bring that out. We'll tell the audience, hey, this is new stuff. We've never done it before. You guys get to be our sort of gauge whether or not this works, uh, and that's how we test it live. So this th sometimes you even improv live right there yeah. and then build it from there, right? Then yeah. you take it back into rehearsal and go, that was pretty funny, let's fix it, let's tighten it, let's yeah, make we'll, this work. Yeah, we'll record a lot of the set. So yeah, if, if someone has like, you know, just they're like, I just have this one idea, let's just try to improvise it and see what happens. We'll tape that set uh, and then watch it again and, and sort of transcribe it from there. So when you transcribe it, do you say, okay, cut this, add this, it was funny when he came in, so. Yeah, definitely. It's always like an editing mindset. Up until I feel like the show goes up, we're always tinkering with like, oh, this beat still feels weird, or maybe this can be, have a little more punch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're constantly editing. So out of the material that you present, let's say, let's say over a week you do 10 new scenes in front of an audience. How many do you think stick? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say if we, if we have tested 10, three to four maybe, or really like have the legs to be like, okay, we can keep working on this, we can keep putting it in the show. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty slim margin. Some, some stuff that seems really funny on paper dies in front of an audience or vice know. versa. <laughs> you know, I used to work for the Second City, and so sometimes you'd see a scene on paper and you're like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And then you saw it on stage and you're like, this is not working. Yeah. And it's so funny to see how things don't work sometimes. Yeah. They read well, but it just doesn't. Doesn't yeah, play. or there's so many things that we'll be like, oh, well, we're laughing, <laughs> but our, <laughs> our laughter, yeah, exactly, is not going to carry the audience. So, <laughs> so when you are in process, uh -huh. right, you you have scenes that you know work from the previous show, mm -hmm. and then you start inserting these new scenes to see if it can hold. Yeah, right, and then it's kind of plug and play. Yeah, add in another new scene, see if that works. Mm -hmm. Test it in front of an audience until you have about how many scenes, so they know how many you're shooting for. Um, I, I guess it varies. For the holiday show, we, we have, we're really lucky, we have some openness, so you'll probably, you could see up to seven original pieces, and that includes songs, to longer scenes, to short blackouts. Uh, that's kind of what you can expect. And are you using any archive material? Mm -hmm, yeah, we're gonna use a, a, a bunch of archive material and okay. do what we call Santa hatting, where we sort of, if it's not a general holiday uh, theme, uh -huh. we sort of try to introduce that so that everything feels like very cohesive and of the moment. Nice. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been with Second City? So I've been touring, it was a year in June, uh, and prior to that I did a ship contract um, in 2016 through the Second City. So for people who don't know what a ship contract means, <laughs> it means she was on a cruise ship yeah. with Norwegian Cruise Lines. Mm -hmm. And where did you tr go to? So we ported out of New York, uh, and our contract was unique. We went to Bermuda uh, every week for 16 weeks, and then, wow. uh, yeah, just four weeks at the back end, we went to uh, Cape Canaveral and Nassau in the Bahamas. So what did you, did you feel a difference with the people on the ship? 
to the people that you see? Tell us. Yeah. What, what's the difference? Um, I would say on the ship, uh, you know, it's, when people come to Second City, I think they know sort of what to expect. The history right. is there. They're comedy fans. They're aware of the alumni. They've got some awareness of what mm -hmm. they're about to watch. Um, on a cruise, you're just one of many entertainment options for them. They mm -hmm. don't necessarily know what you're doing or how to do it. So it, it is really like a learning curve of, of like how to teach an audience, how to watch improv, how to teach them what we're doing, how to mm -hmm. show them like that this is how the show works. Like participate yeah. here. Yeah, right. exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. So Megan, what's your goal? Oh, oh man. Um, like if you had your dream, right? If you had your whole dream and you could just write the story, yeah. where does it end for you? Uh, I mean, I would love to continue working in comedy. I love writing. Um, I'm lucky that I get to do a lot of it in this job, and I would love to continue that. So writing comedy professionally is absolutely a dream. You know, I think what a lot of people don't appreciate is um, it, it, it like makes me like twerk, right? When somebody says, um, oh, well, Second City people, they're stand-ups. They're not oh, stand-up, no. right? It's all improv that's based on... Um, writing and creating ideas based on a group mm -hmm. collaboration, right? Yeah. Um, that's the foundation of it and creating something from nothing, right? Just, Absolutely. just building off of the yes and concept of, I have this idea and everybody's in. Mm -hmm. Nobody will say, I think that's a dumb idea, let's play it out, right? Yeah, absolutely. So. Tina Fey often says, why would you sit in front of a blank typewriter by yourself when you can improvise the scene out? Yeah. And, um, and I think it's such a gift, you know, that, that style of Absolutely. work. But what I think the best thing that comes out of improvisers is you all come out writers. Mm -hmm. Most of you come out writers. Yeah. And I think people think of um, the Belushis, and I don't know if you know that the Belushi brothers went here. To College of oh, did they really? Yes. Yeah, so didn't the know theater that. you're performing in is the Belushi Performance Hall. Oh, that's so they both cool. started here. Wow. And um, their teacher here said you should try out for Second City. Oh and my that's gosh. How built their confidence. There's a scholarship for Jim here and, oh, wow. and, and John. Um, and Jim comes and supports events we do to build the scholarship oh, that's for our theater wonderful. students. But um, what I think that is pretty amazing is that. You, Everybody knows the big names, like John Candy. They don't know how many writers mm -hmm. came out of Second City. Yeah. There's hundreds of writers on sitcoms right now. And, and right now, there's quite a few, actually. Yeah. You know, can you name some of them that you know? Yeah, I mean, Asher Perlman, I know, writes for Late Night. Ariel Dumas writes for Late Night. I mean, Amber Ruffian has, uh, you know, a huge part on uh, Seth Meyers, where she's a writer and she does correspondent pieces. Jenny Hagel, same thing. Um, truly, I think any comedy show that you love, if you look at the list of writers, the, uh, a huge majority of them are, are Second City alums. Which is so exciting. And yeah. I think that's kind of a secret, you know, mm -hmm. because people don't know them. Right. But there's a lot of directors that come out of this, and they call it the comedy mafia in LA, right? That if you're part of Second City, you're part of the family. Yeah. But I think there's a shorthand that you learn, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, like you said, it's so collaborative and you get really, really good at just like working with everyone and and being recognized for what you can uniquely bring as well as like recognizing like, oh, on paper, I might be able to write this kind of funny, but I know my castmate can really do it. And, and that's like such a gift. And it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like you're way better at this. You do it. Yeah, it's a shared goal of just like mm -hmm. we want to produce the funniest material possible so however we can do that however we can each contribute mm -hmm. to that we share that goal do you think um, writing has changed or the comedy has changed in the last five five four five years have you seen a shift in anything yeah absolutely I mean I think you know one of the tenets of improv is always playing to the top of your intelligence and uh, I think that more and more comedians especially at Second City we're really trying to you know make sure that we're using inclusive language that we're just we're really playing to the top of those intelligences right. that people always feel welcome and warm and that the that we're never punching down Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, so what she means by punching down is when you're talking about status, you, mm -hmm. you're not trying to be better than everybody. It's not right. Don Rickles right. kind of comedy. No, right? it's, no, yeah. It's it's yeah. It's not taking someone who's like not in a position of power and making fun of them. Right. It's you know, comedy has often been a tool to to make fun of people in power, and, and right. that's how we sort of want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we want to see. Yeah. I like how you say that. And that's how we want to see. Yeah. It. <laughs> but I think it, it makes it safe, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not hurting anybody. Absolutely. You don't, that's not the goal. No. We want our audiences to, to reflect diverse point of mm -hmm. views as we on stage try to do that. So we want people to come to the show and really see themselves.
themselves and, and, and see that experience. Well, we can't wait to see your show. Thanks. So the good, the bad, and the ugly sweater. Yes. And we'll be watching for you. Great. Thank and good you luck so with your career. Thank you oh, so much for coming you. on the show. Thanks. Right. So don't miss your chance to see the Second City production of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly Sweater on December 7th. Get your tickets now by visiting atthemac.org or by calling the box office at 630-942-4000. Come support college student programming and see some of our talented student ensembles. The DuPage Community Concert Band plays on December 2nd. On December 3rd, come see the Chamber Orchestra. Don't miss the Percussion Ensemble on December 4th. Chamber Singers and Concert Choir will perform on December 5th. On December 8th, be sure to come see the DuPage Chorale perform. When you stop by for a show this season, please don't forget to bring a donation to put under the Mac Giving Tree. We are collecting non-perishable food items for People's Resource Center, as well as winter accessories, gifts for seniors and teens like sweatshirts and slippers for Metropolitan Family Services. Please visit atthemac.org slash holiday. This year, we are so excited to share a gorgeous new production of The Nutcracker, which features the critically acclaimed Salt Creek Ballet. Here to tell you all about this magical production of a timeless classic is the artistic director and choreographer, Sergei Kozodayev. Sergei, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I cannot tell you, um, when I saw your production, I went with our production manager, and we were looking at different productions to bring a new production here. And from the moment the curtain opened, with the gorgeous costumes and the lighting and, and how meticulous the dancers were, I was like, this is it. And, and Joe looked at me. Now, Joe is a production manager, a tech guy. He's like, I love it. I know, too. It's so beautiful. Your work is really, really beautiful. Um, tell me what inspired you to do The Nutcracker. Uh, thank you for the compliment, and I'm really proud of our scenery and costumes and of my da dancers as well. And what Nutcracker, it's, it's so popular and it's so important for uh, modern culture because it's tradition. It's old, it's old Christian tradition. And we have to keep this tradition. And of course, Tchaikovsky, who's the best genius mm -hmm. and the best, and and this is this is Christmas Eve story. That's why that's why it's so popular, and that's why all family love it. And it's now it's tradition in the United States, not cracker. You know, I know, for example, in, in Boston they did once, it used to be 56 of Nutcracker by December and half of January. So it's, it's all over the country. You know, though, I have to tell you, when I was looking for what's the next company I would like to work with, I went and saw the Joffrey's new version. I saw um, different companies that, that through the agents, they send you videos. And what I loved about yours was that it was so classic. Um, and when I, when I saw the look of the show and the feel of the show, um, it was everything I would want a traditional show to be with the crisp costumes to the ribbon in the hair, to the lace on the socks, to the, um, the, 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 the mice and the fight. And, it's, and it's, it's really for children. It's beautiful for children to yeah. see this show. And I think, as a parent, you want your child to see the most classic, beautiful version they can see to remember this, because we're making memories, right? When we go see the Nutcracker, we're creating a tradition that this is what we do to get ready for the holidays. And it's such a, you see families, families and families and grandmothers with their grandchildren. And, and when I saw so many new, there's so many new takes on it now, on, on the Nutcracker. And I think parents want to see the traditional version, you know? Yes, I absolutely agree. You know, you create your own story. You have to... Ernst Theodor Hoffman, genius. Tchaikovsky is genius. Dumas, who wrote the libretto, 
Alexander Dumas, it's an author right. of Three Musketeers, Count Monte Cristo, etc. Also a genius. Why you think you can do better? Right. Dude, just tell story. Just tell story. You can you can put it in modern customs like mm. you know story Romeo and Juliet. It's a story too. You cannot right. mess with this. What what you can say better than Shakespeare? What you can say better than Tchaikovsky or right. Goffman and Dumas all together? And orchestra music. You cannot ignore music. And I'm so excited this story that we're putting will be, our orchestra. You know what's interesting? In Tchaikovsky's score set up everything what's happened on stage. Don't mess with this. Because Tchaikovsky wrote specifically for even um, um, Petipa um, ordered the score. And there is, I need five bars for trumpet call attack. I need six, eight bars for mice screaming under the floor. And et cetera, et cetera, so specific. And don't mess with this. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to be right. It's going to be nonsense. Right. So what, um, you're, have you started, you've started working on the show already. You've started already, rehearsing. Yeah, yeah. We and started already one month. How long have you been? One month you've been rehearsing already? Yeah, yeah. We started, yeah. We start end of September. Amazing. And how many in the cast? A lot. It's 74. Approximately 74. We have, uh, yeah, cast is 74. 74. I mean, 74 costumes at least. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And then the, you bring in some guest artists to yes, do the, the yes. lead roles, yeah, correct? Yeah. So which, which ones are guest artists in the show? At this time, it will be a uh, former, former principal dancer from Houston, mm -hmm. the couple from Houston. And uh, we do some other shows. And there is, we, we have different kind of uh, guest, guest dancers acclaimed professionally through, through the United States and all world around. Actually, it will be my son. No way! Yeah. Is this his first time? No, but in the Mac, in the Mac, it will be yes, it will be my son. No, Your son. son. Mm -hmm. So have have you trained him? Yes, I I trained him, but then he trained in Stuttgart with also with Russian teacher and and he's he's a great dancer. He is with Houston Ballet for many years. Sergey in Boston Ballet in Houston Ballet. Houston Ballet, mm -hmm. Boston Ballet. In Boston Ballet. Yeah. So you must be very proud. I am. That's awesome. Yeah. Sergey, tell everybody why the Russian fundamentals of ballet are so important for a dancer to learn. The style. Disagree. Not style. If you have technique, you can produce any style. Thank you. You know, okay. if, if you would tell to any musicians, or a musician will say, I'm not playing Mozart, it's not my technique or my style. Right. Mozart is a style. It's a Rococo. Bach is a style. It's Baroque. And uh, they're giving style. Stylistic, it's style, it's details. There is column. The foundation. It's foundation. But decoration is different. That's what it is style. But it means, so we have technique foundation. It's a column. But if you know technique, you can do anything. That's you what can I do think. Petipa, right. Or you can do Martha Graham. I believe that too. I, when I was very young, my mom put us in ballet. Mm -hmm. and But with the Russian, the Russian fundamentals, because they, the, your muscles grow differently and everything, the foundation and the style, then yeah. you can dance anything. Yeah. And I directed and choreographed. And I was always grateful I had that, um, that foundation, right? And it's, it's what carries you through to all the other forms of dance. Yes, and make you safe with no injury. Good technique, no injury. No injuries. Yeah. So, how long have you been choreographing? Mm. Uh, how long? I started to choreograph long ago when I was dancer. I'm holding degree. I complete uh, Leningrad Conservatory. Now it's St. Petersburg Conservatory. This um, one of the it's equivalent, probably like here is Juilliard. Okay. Uh, Tchaikovsky, so Tchaikovsky in, from this school. So you studied in Russia and then you came here? Russia, and then I came here. And I started choreograph back to Russia as well. Oh, you did there. So it's about maybe 40 years. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. What is your next most favorite project you're working on? I'm thinking about uh, Snow Queen. Oh, wow. And by Hans Christian Andersen. Mm -hmm. It's a story. Not very popular here, but this is, um, this is a story about two kids who were separated and and little girl took a risk to, to save life of little boy. And so. when are you going to do that? Uh, it's a project. Hard to say. I just started. Oh, you just started? Yeah. And is this going to be your own show that you're creating, or is this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Through Salt Creek. Through Salt Creek. So talk about Salt Creek, Sergei. Sergei, what with with Salt Creek? People can take their children there if they want to learn to dance all yeah. the way through what age do you mm -hmm. teach through? Through up to college. Up to college. Yeah, after they're graduating, they're going to colleges or to professional company. And your company has been around for how long? I'm here already 20 years, and, and before, it's 35 years, I think, the, the company. Salt it's a Creek wonderful Valley. company. Yes, thank you, it is. And so with your company, your goal is to teach, train, and then to also have your professional company who does performances throughout the area. Yes, yes, it's, it's educational. They have serious training. Um, there is a big commitment. I mean, I hate slow big commitment. It's commitment. Right. Because how can be little commitment or big commitment? Commitment is commitment. <laughs> and I, I hate when people say too much commitment. Commitment is commitment. I'm sorry, dear parents. <laughs> well, and if you want to be the and best. And they love it. But if you want to yeah. be the best, yeah. it takes time and it takes practice. It takes just time. like a gymnast, just like an athlete, just like an actor. You, you have to, that, that's, and this is the time when they're young to build all those skills and muscles yes. and technique. Yes, it's full time, it's full time training, full time position. If you're missing a couple days, you're already in risk to be injured. For injury, yeah, you you have to you have to be constantly in, in train. So, how many shows do you think you do a year? Uh, this year, we have uh, twelve shows of Nutcracker. Twelve shows of Nutcracker. Governor's State, Hinsdale, and Skokie. Wonderful. And on springtime, on springtime, we have again we have it here. I know. Because the we're happy. La Silfide, timeless classic by Burnonville. Dutch choreographer. Well, we're so happy to have this partnership, and I'm excited to see where it might grow. Me too. I'm, I'm so glad to be here. It's a great yeah. partnership. Yes. And we're, we're really grateful to have your beautiful work on our stage and, and, uh, and to have the New Philharmonic play live with it. We'll bring it oh, a yeah, whole that's, new dimension that's so of important. life. That's so important. We have to pray for orchestra. It's so unique and valuable element of... Uh, it's not element. Without orchestra, it's the show. It's sort of you know like, well, good record, but with orchestra, it makes it. Comes it makes it special. It really it's does. Made, yeah. And I know I know the conductor has been working on it for a long time too. He wanted the minute we told him you were coming, he wanted to see a, a, a video of one of your productions so that he yes. could learn your timing. Mm -hmm. And um, so it'll be interesting to see these two great organizations come together. Yeah. Yeah, two great organizations come together and going to be a new organism, new creature. It really will be. And it's going to happen here. Yes, it <laughs> will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't miss your chance to see this year's magical production of Salt Creek Ballet's The Nutcracker on December 14th or 15th. For tickets or more information, visit at themac.org or call the box office at 630-942-4000. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you at the theater and next time on Backstage Buzz. Thank you for doing this. That Thank was so you. nice.
Good morning, it's Roman from US 99 Styles in Rome. And now come take a look at our studios and see what your uh, COD alumni does for them. Chicago's hottest country, US 99. Good morning, it's Styles in Rome. And it's 723 Friday morning. Can we give a shout out to you? I'm over here on this side and I'm on my microphone, my computer again. Here's the computer that all of our songs and commercials are loaded into. You gotta have headphones for the radio. Um, and also, when you get up as early as we do, you gotta have green tea because we wake up at 3.30 every single morning just to be here on the radio for you. And how about this? We are three minutes away. Yeah! Live on the radio. Oh, we are so excited. You do not want to miss this interview. Jason Aldean right after Russell Dickerson on US 99. My name is Justin Roman. You may know me as Roman from US 99 Styles and Roman. Uh, 14 years on the radio. I can't believe it's flown by. Um, I love everything about what I do. I, as a guy who's born and raised in Chicago, to be the, the voice of Chicago, right? To be the, the voice and the foundation of US 99. Uh, it's an honor and I just cherish every day. I graduated from Lake Park High School, and I baseball was my thing. I wanted to be pitch for the Cubs or be the next Michael Jackson. I had talked to the coach over at University of Memphis, and he agreed that I could walk on and give me a shot as a walk on. And I'll never forget, uh, about three weeks or two weeks before I was supposed to leave for University of Memphis, I was sitting at a Baker Square, and I was really eating, I don't know, French silk pie, whatever you do at Baker Square, and I was like, I don't want to leave here. I don't want to leave this place. I don't know anybody going to Memphis. What do I do? Where do I go? And College of DuPage. Enter College of DuPage. I was like, you know what? I can still go there. I'm not going to fall behind. And I can save my parents tons of money, which they love that part, right? And then, but two, I was getting the same education that you would get at, you know, a four year university in the middle of nowhere. But like, I got to be home. I got to stay home and really figure out what I wanted to do in life. And it was cool. I knew people. You know, a lot of people from my high school went there. I wasn't ready to go off on my own somewhere, so COD was a great, I don't want to say comfort zone, but it was. I felt, I felt very comfortable there. What makes it better in my mind is that you are known in that classroom. I didn't go away to school, but I heard stories about, you know, being one of 300 in a class. And I'm sorry, but I don't think that that's a good way to learn. You know, at COD, I was, you know, one of 35 or whatever the class size was where I had that one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher or if I had questions, I could ask them or uh, stay after if I had to, you know. Um, I was always known. I, you know, the teacher always knew I existed, you know. Yeah, COD was a, a great, great choice that I didn't know I, I was going to make at the time, but it turned out looking back to be a, a godsend. I've been lucky enough to get back to COD because of what I do here at, at US 99 on the radio. And I'll tell you, man, when I went there, I thought the, the campus was huge when I was a kid, when I was a student there. But the kids today that go there are thinking about going there like they're lucky. And I, I recommend it heavily because you have this gigantic campus at your fingertips, right? And it's in your neighborhood to have that uh, hands-on experience at your fingertips. I can't think of a better place to start your college career. And um, I'm living proof. I mean, it's, it worked for me and it can work for you. Ladies and gentlemen, for your halftime entertainment, the Bulls are proud to present the Kids Talent Search for tonight, three very talented... So a couple seasons ago, I was uh, lucky enough to be asked to be the in-game entertainment host for the Chicago Bulls. My two favorite sports teams are the Cubs and the Bulls. Like I just, I grew up in the Jordan era, so I grew up like Michael Jordan is everything and the Bulls are everything. So when they asked me to do that, I was thrilled. And um, it's my second season, I have an amazing co-host named Courtney Hall. She's the uh, anchor on WGN News in the Morning. And we have such a great vibe together. So we are the ones on the court, in the crowd, like hosting all the games, um, you know, all the contests. We're the ones getting the crowd riled up. And I'm at every single home game. But it's fun, man. I mean, think about this. I do Bulls games every single home game. And they go late. You know, they're nighttime games. I do the morning show for US 99 where I get up at 3.30 every single morning. So those two things really don't fit. But I make them fit because I'd rather do both of those things than none of them, right? So make it work because they're both dream jobs that literally anybody would die to do and I get to do both of them. So there's no way in the world that I would ever um, complain or not do them because I, I, I love them both. All right, there it is, a wrap up of a day in the life of a College of DuPage alumni, Justin Roman. Thank you so much for hanging out and watching what I do. But it's time for you to get out because I got to get ready for the game. Go Bulls, get out of here. Later, COD, bye. Was it all right? Yeah. I don't know, was that all right? <laughs>